cataractcoach.com. Traumatic pediatric cataract. A foreign body pierced the cornea and the lens capsule. So how extensive is the damage? Let's find out together. Watch the video for the first time with you. Yes, the video is sped up. You can see there's a corneal perforation as well as looks like some iris material on the lens capsule, perforated lens capsule. Tripan blue dye, obviously very important here to stain, to see what's going on. Now micro scissors going inside to, tra to try to create some sort of capsule opening. Uh, Rexes can be very difficult in these cases, but that's a really nice job. Looks pretty good here. Now there can be some adhesions here as well, and there can be irregularities of the capsule too. And so you may have already areas that it's already run out to the zonger or supports. I like this idea of just kind of debulking the nucleus. You obviously don't need a phaco probe. This lens is buttery soft, just by manual IA to aspirate everything out. I think by doing this, you'll give yourself a much better view. So cleaning this out nice and easy. Now it looks like the posterior capsule is also been pierced. Now the question is, is there a lens material in the posterior segment? Now, usually in these pediatric cases, the lens material obviously is very, very soft. There is no nuclear sclerosis. So the lens material tends to stay in the capsular bag, even if you pierce the posterior capsule. So at this point, you could take out all of the lens material and you can do a vitrectomy and then, you know, put on the indirect ophthalmoscope there in the operating room or use a posterior viewing system and figure out what is going on in the vitreous cavity. And I think odds are you won't find any lens material back there. But yeah, the posterior capsule is also wide open. Important to figure out what was the nature of the injury. Was it like a thorn going in and out of the eye? Or is there a foreign body that's already in the posterior segment and still there? And if that's the case, that needs to be removed as well. So here we go. Nice uh, creation of a capsule opening there in the front. By manual, looks like the tractor now. Here's where I'd want to use some triamcinolone as well just to get better visualization. Remember, the vitreous in a young person, a baby, or pediatric is very thick. Remember to check out cataractcoach.com, the website, much more than just YouTube here. You can search all the videos with a far better search engine. If you want to see all these pediatric cases, there's a whole category. You want to see trauma cases, another whole category. The onus is on you to become a better surgeon. Now back to our case here. As we were saying, the vitreous in a young patient can be very, very thick, not very liquidy. And so here's where it's helpful to have some triamcinolone to stain the vitreous. And so also keep in mind the surgeon may have better visualization through the microscope than we're seeing on this video, even though it's HD. I like the dispersive viscoacid going in this to stabilize things. And here we go, going to put a lens in. And how are you going to put the lens? I'm guessing a three-piece lens here is probably our best bet. But let's see. Oh, single-piece lens. Okay. Again, I'm watching the video for the first time with you. Now, you just have to make sure those haptics go in the bag. You can't put this lens in the sulcus. That's not a great sulcus lens. So get that under the rexus edge or the ca anterior capsule opening edge. And then get the other arm in. And then the optic you can keep in the bag. I don't know if I do a posterior optic capture here behind the posterior capsule. And again, the surgeon here did not, so I, I agree there. And then slowly removing the viscoelastic. I like using the vitrector there too. That makes a lot of sense. You can also ensure that there's no vitreous in the way. And that's nicely positioned. Very well done. And this patient can have a nice outcome. Now, what do you choose for the lens power or post-op refractive target? You know, it depends on the age of the patient. If the patient is, uh, let's say, three, four, five years old or older, you can shoot close to emetropia like the other eye. Or sometimes people shoot for just a little hyperopia, anticipating that the eye will have a myopic shift with time. But either way, remember, a myopic shift is no big deal. You can always do LASIK or PRK for that. That's an easy treatment. And so sealing up all the incisions here, I'd also put some triamcinolone in the anterior chamber just to quell the post-op inflammation for this child. Ah, hey, look at that. You read my mind. That's really going to help a lot. Obviously, there's no vitreous. Everything's cleaned up just beautifully. This is a very nicely done case. And I think the patient should have a pretty good outcome there. Beautifully done. Thank you for sending the video. And again, remember, we've got so much great material for you, including a weekly podcast. Every week, everywhere where you find podcast services, an amazing one-hour podcast where you will learn a lot.